Hello everyone, this is Spencer Campbell of Gila RPGs, and this is the first of a few how to play rune videos that I'm going to be recording. Um, this first video is going to give you the basic basics of how combat in rune works. Specifically, I'm going to be playing through the tutorial scenario that is found in the playtest materials for the upcoming or current rune playtest. Um, my goal here is to walk you through what a combat uh, feels like in Rune, take you step by step through the process. You should hopefully have a good sense of how the game works uh, at a very basic level. And then in future videos, you'll see me add more components or more complexity to combat as I add more of the features that won't be seen here in this first video. So join me as I go through this first tutorial. I'll walk you through all the pieces uh, and then watch some of the other videos, see what Rune is all about, and join the play test and you know, have some fun playing the game for yourself. So to start, you can see here that I've got a four by four grid on the right side of the screen. That's where Rune combat takes place, on a small grid in which you, the player, in this case represented by this sort of green knight fellow here, uh, face off against all sorts of horrible enemies. In this case, I'm going to be fighting the training soldier, which is just going to be this red soldier. A really simple fight just to show you some of the, the kind of the basics of how Rune works. In Rune, you as the player carry gear on you. Gear is typically going to be things like weapons, like in this case, a long sword and a shield that I have equipped. But other instances, you might have uh, more advanced gear, amulets, rings, and other things that give you cool bonuses. Check out one of the other videos that will show you some how, how some of that stuff works. Okay, so how does combat in Rune work? Well, it goes through a series of rounds. Basically, each round, the player and the enemies are going to kind of go back and forth, moving around the grid and trying to kill one another. Um, a round has five steps to it, and once you get used to the, the five steps, it kind of starts to flow very quickly. And you'll find that combat in Rune actually feels like a... I don't know, like a puzzle almost, as you are trying to figure out how to best adapt to the enemy and what they're going to be doing. So let's walk you through the five steps of how combat works in this tutorial scenario, the first tutorial scenario. The very beginning of any round begins with the enemy deciding what they're going to do. Um, you can see here in the bottom, there is a training soldier card here. Uh, what, let's walk through what this card says. It's an enemy type and it has six HP or health. So it has six health, it means I need to do six harm to it in order to kill this training soldier. It also lets me know that the range that this soldier can attack me is either in the same space, so that tells us we can occupy the same space or any adjacent space. We'll talk about what that means in a little bit. You can also see the action sets that are available to the enemy soldier. These are the things that the enemy soldier could do depending on the role. Speaking of, that's the first step. I take a d6 and I roll it to see what the enemy soldier is going to do. In this case, I rolled a three. I'll use this little red die here to dictate uh, sort of what the enemy soldier is doing at a given time. They rolled a three. So I take a look and see what the enemy soldier is gonna do this round. They are going to, with a one to four value, so three sits in there, they're gonna move one space closer to me on the grid and they're gonna deal one harm if possible. Think about this as in Souls games where enemies telegraph their actions, their intents, right? And when you're playing Dark Souls or Elden Ring or Bloodborne or any of those sorts of games, enemies oftentimes have visual or auditory cues that let you know they're about to do something. That's what's going on here. The enemy has kind of uh, indicated to us that they plan on charging closer and hurting us if we get within range. So that's step one. The second step is to move the enemy. If the enemy does have an action that is going to have it move, it moves now. In this case, we do know the enemy is gonna move. They're gonna move one space closer. So what do we mean by that? Well, all of this grid is a four by four. Each one of these uh, is considered a space. Closer just means that they wanna get closer to me, the player. So they will move probably there. That moves them closer to where I am currently. A thing to note here is that players and enemies can occupy the same space. When they do, they deal more damage to each other than they normally would. So as we're gonna start seeing the characters move around the map, there are decisions you have to make as a player. Do I wanna get close to the enemy? How close do I wanna get? They're gonna hurt me. Do I wanna try and hurt them faster than they can hurt me? It's all part of the puzzle you play. So that's step two, is moving closer. 
The next step is to decide what you, the player, are going to be doing. Um, the player is also going to roll dice to see what they can do. In this case, it's linked up to the gear that they have. So in this case, I have a long sword, which is a weapon that sits in one hand, and it has a range of anybody that's in the same space or adjacent. I also have a shield. You'll notice that the shield doesn't have a range because the shield doesn't do any harm. It doesn't hurt people. It's there to prevent me from getting hurt. You'll also see that there are various values that show you what I can do when I roll. So what do I roll exactly? A player has a stamina pool. In this case, for the tutorial scenarios, the player is always going to have a stamina a pool of 2d6. You're going to roll those 2d6 and see what you can do with the results. So let me roll and see how I do. I rolled a 2 and a 6. So let me go ahead and update these purple dice here uh, and give us a sense of what my character can do during this round. I've got a two and a six. What does that mean exactly? Well, I'm gonna assign each of these dice to one of my pieces of gear. So I look and see what I can do with a two and a six. Well, let's start with the two. With the two, specifically with a longsword, I can deal one harm. Okay, cool. I know that I can deal one harm if an enemy is close enough to me. Uh, a two is not usable for a shield. So right now I know that if I want to use this two, I'm going to use it with a longsword or not at all. The other thing that I have is a six. What can I do with a six? Well, with the shield, I can block two harm, which means if the enemy is going to hurt me this turn, I can reduce that harm. Or I can move one space closer and deal three harm on my own. That's pretty good. That's pretty powerful. Now I need to decide what do I want to do with these dice. I need to assign them to my gear. One other thing that I can do is I can sum the dice together. I can sum them together and assign them as a unit to a single value or to a single outcome on one of the gear. Now in this case, I can't do that because 2 plus 6 equals 8, and that goes well beyond the limits of what either of these weapons can do. So I can't sum this turn, but maybe in a future turn I could. The summing is there to help you in those instances where the, you get these low values like the two and it's not really helping us right now. So instead, I'm just not going to use the two. Any stamina that you don't spend just gets thrown away. It just doesn't get used this turn. It doesn't get lost. It just means you didn't use your stamina fully this turn. So I'm going to just move this six over here to the longsword to kind of show like, yeah, I'm going to swing with this longsword. That's my intent. So I've done step three. I've rolled the dice and I've started to do the puzzle. Step three is the, maybe the crunchiest, the most complex step of combat because this is the puzzle solving. This is where you're really thinking about, I know what the enemy's gonna do and I have some limited options with what I can do. What is the best possible route for me in this moment? I've decided I'm gonna just try and kill this training soldier as fast as I can. So I'm gonna move uh, in one space and deal three harm. Step four, my turn to move. The enemy moved. I'm going to be reacting to them. Do I have a move? Yes, I do. My six allows me to move one space. So I'm going to move one space to the enemy, closer to the enemy. Now, when you're moving in the grid, you always move orthogonally, meaning left, right, up, or down. Diagonally, you can't move in this game. That would be two spaces of movement. So for example, if I wanted to go to this space here, I'd have to go one, two. I can't do that because I only have one movement. Now, some items and some enemies can move. They're a little bit more mobile than that, but primarily in Rune, you can only move uh, orthogonally. So I've moved closer, which means we're in the last step. It's time to deal harm. Harm is dealt at the same time by both sides, meaning the enemy hits us and we hit the enemy at the same time. So if there's any harm being dealt, we're both going to give and take it together. Is the enemy harming me? Well, as a reminder, they rolled a three and they are going to deal one harm to us. So, okay, I know that I'm taking one harm. I am dealing three harm to the enemy. And cool, so we know how much harm is being dealt. Is any of it being blocked? Are either of us using our shields? No, I haven't used my shield. And the, the trading soldier really rarely uses their shield, only when they roll a six. So we're just both going to hurt each other. And you're going to see pretty quickly that I'm probably going to win this race of damage. That's intentional. This is the tutorial. So we hurt each other at the same time. The training soldier deals one harm to me. I'll just reflect that up here with a nine. I'm out of nine out of 10 health for my character. And the training soldier gets dropped down to three HP. So they are at half the health they were before. That's one round of combat in Rune.
Let's continue through this combat just to see how it plays out, just so you get more familiar with how things work. And then after you've watched this, after you've seen this scenario go through, you can do the tutorial yourself with the playtest materials, or you'll at least have a better understanding of the basic rules of Rune. So back to step one, what is the enemy going to do? Remember, they're going to sort of choreograph their movements here. Let me roll 1d6 to see what happens. The enemy rolled a four, which means they are going to try to move closer to me and deal one harm. It's a very similar result. In fact, the same result as before. And that just shows you that some of these enemies have action sets that become very predictable, right? Two thirds of the time, the training soldier is going to move closer and deal one harm. I now know very clearly how this enemy type works, which means if I ever face them in the future, I'll have gear that will appropriately help me deal with a kind of constantly aggressive enemy in this instance. Okay, so we know what the enemy is going to do. Step two, move the enemy. They move one closer. Like I said before, enemies and characters and players, we can all occupy the same space. With one thing, only two characters can occupy the same space. That's not a problem here because there's only two of us on the board, but when it starts to get crowded and there's lots of enemies, that can be something to keep track of. So the enemy is going to move into this space. What does that mean as a reminder? It means that if we hurt each other and we stay in the same space as each other, we deal an additional harm to one another, which means that one harm the soldier is going to do is actually two to me if I decide to stay there, but it also means I can hurt them more efficiently. We don't know what's going to happen because we've now reached step three, where I roll my stamina pool and decide what I'm going to do. So let's roll it up and see how it goes. I got a six and a five. All right, let's just go ahead and see how this works. Already in my brain, because I'm familiar with these uh, these rules and these this, this gear, I know I've won the fight. But let's walk through why I've won the fight, just so that we're all on the same page. What can I do with a six and a five? Well, with a five, with my longsword, I can move one space and deal two harm. The enemy soldier has three HP right now, so I don't necessarily want to move away and deal two, because I won't kill it in time. Um, so I might take this and just not move and deal two harm plus one and kill them off. The other thing that I can do is I can put the five over here, which is moving one and blocking one harm with my shield. What can I do with my six? I can sit still and block two harm, or I can move one and deal three harm with my longsword. Either way I cut it, I'm going to come out on top. I think you can see that. There's a lot of different paths that I can take. Let me just show you one option that I would sort of puzzle out here. As I'm thinking about my options, I'm going to assign this 5 to my longsword. I'm going to assign this 6 to my shield. Let's see how that pans out. Step 4, move the player. Can I move? Yeah, I can. I have a move of 1. Do I want to move? No, I don't. And you don't have to move if you have a move value. It's up to you to decide if you're going to use it. I'm not. I'm going to stay still. I want to be on this space and deal more harm. Yeah, it means I'm going to potentially take more harm, but I know I've got a big block coming with my shield. So let's do the final step of the round, which is the combat. The training soldier attacks me, and I attack the training soldier. Well, the training soldier is going to do one harm plus one, so they're going to do two harm to me. Am I blocking any harm? I am. I'm blocking two harm, which means I'm not going to take any damage from the training soldier. Now, I'm going to hurt the training soldier. I'm going to deal three, or sorry, two harm to them, plus one because we're in the same space, which means I'm dealing three harm to them. Are they blocking? No, their value of a four doesn't allow them to block, which means they're going to take all three harm. What does that mean? The training soldier's HP is reduced to zero, and I have slain it without taking any harm in retribution. That is the first tutorial session or scenario for the rune playtest. Easy? Yeah, it's supposed to be. This one is supposed to teach you sort of the basics. And now having, having watched this, you understand the basics of how combat works, the five steps through rounds, and how it builds on that. Future videos will show you how this sort of starts to change or adapt as different scenarios show up. So for example, this was with, with just one enemy. How does this happen if there's multiple enemies? What happens when there's different types of terrain on the grid or even different types of gear beyond this longsword and shield combo that I have? I hope that you found this helpful. Uh, if you are interested in learning more about Rune, you can find a link to the website in the description below. There will also be links there on the website to the playtest materials so that you can be a part of the playtest. You can try this out yourself. You can print out the grid, try it, have fun with it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to talking to you again in the future. Have a good one. Bye.